It's on the number one breakfast show in the country, Morning at NTV. Well, in the wake of the National Unity Platform calling for peaceful protest, security officers are saying, no, 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 no. We shall continue mining security in this country because we are not sure that unscrupulous individuals will actually invade this peaceful protest and actually ban the country. But how best will they be able to do this? Yes, I do have David Musiri. Uh, he's a... Uh, from the National Unity Platform Party. Operations and Institutions, Mr. David Musiri. We also do have Opio Okolalo Amanu. He is the Democratic Party spokesperson. I'm going to be having this conversation with these two gentlemen and uh, we see how best they can actually strike a balance. If the FDC failed for the last 15 years to call for peaceful protests right here in Uganda, what makes the National Unity Platform Party so sure that they'll be successful in their endeavor to achieve the same feat? Yes, very good morning, gentlemen. David Musiri and Opio Okola. Yes. Let me start with you, David Musiri, on this question of FDC having tried the same for the last 15 years. They failed. What makes you think you stand a chance this, uh, this time around? As no Thank you so much mm. <coughs> for this opportunity. Actually, I would say you have the right man in the, in the studio. All right. Yeah. Uh, all of you know we, we, it has been attested that uh, from days of inception that uh, we were taken uh, and President Museven wanted to portray us or brand us as as hooligans, uh, just like he called us uh, a group of young, violent Ugandans, mm. which is so, so wrong. And I would want to testify to you that we are a group of non-violent people. Mm. As much as we have been portrayed with all sorts of names mm. as hooligans, even forgetting that amidst us, we have intellectuals that have gone through a lot of, and all levels that have, got, uh, that have gotten a lot of experiences. Uh, today, as we talk, we, we have a lot of things that we have started, and as our president came up and declared a peaceful demonstration, much as there is a lot of impunity, there is a lot of uh, lack of freedom of press, because we have gone through stages so far. Since he called on this peaceful demonstration, we have carried out uh, a lot of activities, actually a prefer of activities have been going on, whereby some of them we could not have the press available since uh, the, they fear so much uh, the dictator. The dictator is at their neck, just like I think you remember uh, the you, IDP. You, you, you just said dictator, uh, David Musiri. Yes. Yes. What do you exactly mean by dictator? Because you, you are noting that President Museveni is a dictator, even though some people who have been arrested by security, he has ordered for them to be released. That's not the manner uh, within which a, di a dictator might want to behave. And he also says those individuals who are arrested and are willing to comply with security will also be released. That is not the Amin kind of dictator we are talking about, are we, David Musi? Actually, we, we may not, uh, we may not uh, define this dictator like the other dictators mm. because he has a lot of things that he uses, like even kind of distortion of information. Mm. Very many times and occasionally, he uses the, his propagandists who come around and portray him as a good man mm. and uh, as someone who actually respects democracy in this country. But I, as we talk now, there are a lot of people. Those are the people that we know and those are the people that have been arrested on camera. We have several of them that are, are in, in, a, in right they are languishing in very many cells, very many safe houses. If he was not a dictator, I would not have safe houses around. So, if he, so you're saying the number of people we are seeing or being released by government is only what meets the eye? They're just a few of individuals? Course, of course, uh, my friend, I would want to tell you mm. that the people that we can only see, they are just... Actually, a, a peop the people that can, we can only see now, they are a, f 
a very few. Hmm. Actually, they cannot even make a court of the people that are being abducted, that are being kidnapped, that are missing. There are a lot of families. Just like if we talk about uh, the incidents that happened on, on November. November 18th and 19th, yes. Actually, we came up with a number of uh, around, around uh, some people uh, came up with the, the total of 100 people, but it wasn't on 100. That is what came on the, on the scene. That is what was seen by the journalists that uh, could cover all instances. Mm -hmm. I am telling you there are villages that lost, one village like this could have lost even 50 of its citizens. And mm -hmm. as we talk now, uh, if he was not a dictator, why would he raid parliament? And if he was not a dictator, why would he overthrow the constitution? David Musseri, it seems like the National Unity Platform Party had a plan to hold protests, even, even though they were to lose this election. It seems like the plan was there even before the election to hold protests. Actually, because even the, mm. the campaigns, even the, even the elections that we went to, mm. themselves it was a protest campaign, if I would describe it. Because as a person who was actually part of the trail, what we went through, it was a battlefield. This was not a normal protest. Uh, mm. It was not a normal election that we have always witnessed. Mm. Because the way, it, the, the way this election was carried out, why would it force even? Because it was forceful. If someone would survive, needed a bulletproof, that means that we're in the battlefield. And I, I, ca I can tell you, uh, this election is among those few elections that we have ever witnessed in Uganda mm. with a lot of ruckus. We lost very many people in these elections, mm. of mm. which, uh, like my friend, uh, my, my young brother, mm -hmm. Senteza, Frank, mm. we lost him. A senior journalist called uh, Ashraf Kasiri was shot, almost dead, just because of covering the deadly kind of action is by the, uh, the security agents so, and sister agents. So David oh. Musiri, there is a viewer who is watching, who also went through the November 19th and 18th protests, who was saying, well, I did see the reaction of security forces when you came out as noob supporters to protest. People got killed, over 54 and over 33 of those individuals were actually innocent people. And you are the same group that is calling for protests. Don't you think security will react in the same way? That is question number one. And also the FDC has preached popular protests to no avail for 15 years. What makes you think things will change this time around? There are two questions, then we talk to Apio Kola too. Yeah, uh, what makes us very different and very special is the first point I told you now. We are calling for peaceful protests. Mm. We have had uh, several precedents that this has, be, uh, this has, uh, has mm. achieved mm. whatever we, we, we are looking for, to overthrow the dictators. Very many dictators have been overthrown after a stolen election. If we talk about, if we talk about the people power, the, the people power revolution in 1986, that is free pipe. I can, I can really attest that when people rose, when people got fed up of this dictator, when people got fed up of the impunity of the injustices, they rose just placards. I would, give, mm. I would give you just mm. an example. Go ahead. This protest, the peaceful protest, started a long time ago. Since we withdrew, uh, we withdrew the, the petition from courts, there are certain activities you may take for granted. Just like these kids you were seeing, that now they are the judges, the chief judges in these public courts. Today, today, if you are to make a research and you go out there and get these young people, just like a few of them, and you sample them around the villages, I, I, I can guarantee you, mm. you, ca I, uh, you can get a few of them that can attest that they, can, they want to become judges of this country. Because that kind of activity that kind of peaceful action or protest actually presents judges. Don't you think you'll be putting the lives of Ugandans at risk based on the facts that we saw on November 18th and 19th, David Musidi? 
we are not putting anyone on risk. Mm. Because peaceful demonstrations does not mean that you confront the army. Peaceful demonstrations do not mean that you confront the army. Opio Okola, we've been seeing what has been happening in Myanmar. There were zero provocations at first, but then we, did, we still did see the military junta fire on the unarmed civilians. People have died in Myanmar. So fast forward to Uganda. We are trying to experiment on the same thing. Is there such a thing as peaceful protest Opio Okola, and how can it be done? Indeed. Mm -hmm. So, just speaking about Democratic Party, Indeed. I'm appearing here uh, for the first time. And it's my first time talking to you, Pio. Oh, thank mm. you. And uh, I want to thank my colleague, mm. my friend from Makero University. Indeed. And uh, also thank the viewers outside there, most especially the people from Teso. Allow me say to you that yoga, yoga warar, ukwe nyuntos biai. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I want to make uh, one thing clear. As the Democratic Party, we do strongly believe in peaceful ways of resolving conflicts. And I do strongly believe equally that the framers of the 1995 Constitution envisaged the circumstance or situation whereby there would be conflicts and the citizens would have to assert their rights and also seek redress to the wrongs. And perhaps show the powers that be that we have our rights and we must fight for them. That is why they included uh, Article 29D, which talks about peaceful demonstrations. Now, peaceful demonstration is, it should be treated the way it sounds. It should be given its meaning, ordinary interpretation. I, I do not think that the framers of the Constitution did not know, as some people want to portray it, that if you say peaceful demonstration, there exists not such a thing. Probably, if, if, if they, they, they knew that it would culminate into violence, they would have not included it, but they went ahead to include it, and good enough, uh, that provision of the Constitution has continued to stay in our Constitution. I, you see, uh, Romeo, yes, okay. our Constitution is, um, I would say, a document that is amended as and when the powers that be deems fit. But if they have not amended that provision of the Constitution, it means it still has the force of the law. Uh, the only challenge that we have in Uganda at present is that whenever citizens come out to animate Article 29D of the Constitution, which talks about peaceful demonstrations, they are met with violence from the security oper operatives. Is it ignorance operatives. on the part of the security operatives not knowing what the constitution uh, pronounces itself on the matter? I wouldn't wish to say that it is ignorance on the part of the security forces. Mm. But one thing is for real, and it is historical. Mm. In 1964, when uh, Dr. Apollo Milton Obote realized that he could use the army to keep himself in power, he actually blended the army and the politicians. 
Now, that has, that precedent that was set then has been followed by various leaders. Mm. Uh, therefore, it is not by error or surprise that uh, the security forces do work whatever that is in their reach to protect the regime in power. So you think that's what, it, that's what is happening right so, now? So any <coughs> attempt, any attempt mm. that is construed by the state or by the government to mean threatening the existence mm. of the NRM government, it has to be quashed and met it with utmost level Based of Based on your assessment of P.O. Kola, you're telling us if they hold peaceful protests, the government will react like they did on November 18th and 19th. And that is a recipe for disaster. I, I, I want to remind you, Romeo, mm. uh, immediately after the 2016 elections, Go ahead. we had the incidences in town here in Kampala City whereby people used to tie themselves with chains on, 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 on the electric poles. And the police would saw them uh, off. Police <laughs> would definitely <laughs> come, pick them, and take them to police cells. Mm. Now, a person who has chained himself, mm. he's stationed, he's not moving. Mm. Why don't you let him exercise his right? Of course, he is on that pole, not because uh, 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 he is he, happy, but is there as a demonstration of a dissatisfaction at some point. So that's why I would like and, to and, know. And, and, and that is exactly mm. what the Constitution provides for. B because that is, that is peaceful. Mm -hmm. But I, I want to tell you what the, 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 the security uh, apparatus did. They can still do it. I think the only uh, peaceful protest that has ever happened uh, in mm. uh, Uganda here is the one that was led by President Seven, the anti-corruption <laughs> walk. <laughs> but, 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 but really... Let's not go there for you. <laughs> 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 so the Democratic Party, we would like to get to know your position. Are you also uh, throwing your weight behind the National Unity Platform Party, calling for the same peaceful protests, or would you rather go into dialogue with this government to iron out these issues? Now, as uh, the Democratic Party, first of all, we strongly believe in dialogue, but also there are levels Indeed. Uh, of dialogue that we do engage in. Now, in Uganda here, you, 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 you cannot engage in dialogue with a person who, whose intention is to stick to power and being ready to meet with utmost level of impetus all of those forces that do threaten his stay in power. Maybe if we do read that the environment aids that, in future, we can engage in dialogue along that line. But for now, two. For now, we 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 think it is uh, it is not it is not it is not it is not it is counterproductive if we take that line. Oh, you think as Democratic Party, you're stating this on national television, the interview Uganda, that you are willing to throw your weight behind Noop and hold these protests, peaceful protests. Uh, you see, uh, Romeo... Because this is the position the President Norbert Mao is not taking. Mao is saying, much as we have a plan B, which are the peaceful protests, we do not have a country B. By telling us what you're telling us, Opio uh, Okola, you're actually veering away from the position of the President of the party, who was at the iPod summit a week ago but one, on Friday. Well, I see you are trying to create a... I'm not trying to create, I'm <laughs> following the facts that you're giving me right now. You're trying to create a... a, a uh, departure, of course, as Suman Basali was said, he wouldn't show up at uh, the summit. That is the mm. Jema, Justice Forum Party. The president said, I won't show up. But the Secretary General, Muhammad Katerega, showed up. So it could be the mm. same situation here with the Democratic Party. Well, the president having a different position from well, the rest of the organs. No, mm. I want to be 
clear. Mm. The president said, in as much as we have plan B, mm. we do not have country B. Mm. That means that in the process of executing whatever plan that we do have, mm. we should be cognizant of the fact that we do not have country B. Therefore, our actions should not affect or injure the existence of a country called Uganda. He actually said we should talk about um, dialogue as a dispute resolution because we don't have a country B. And I did look at the wordings. That's what he meant. Of course, of course. I am telling you yes. that we do... He was supporting we do, the summit. We, we do he was justifying the summit and you going there as DP. We do that we don't have a country B, we should look at dialogue as the only solution. We do strongly believe mm. in dialogue, just mm. like I've said. And uh, indeed, when you mm. look at the issues that were tabled in that mm. summit, mm. and the resolutions, I am glad to, mm. to have watched uh, you people broadcast uh, in the, in the yes, news, mm. that there are some people who were released. Mm. Indeed. Now, as the Democratic Party, mm. first of all, we are a party of ideas. We could not just keep uh, words, throwing words of vituperation on media, insults and quarreling and lamenting mm -hmm. without uh, 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 doing something. Because mm -hmm. we knew that if we did something, something would come out. Now, our endeavors, our efforts actually gave joy to the families. You witnessed it on television. Indeed, we did. Mm -hmm. And that gave me satisfaction that at least I have participated mm. in doing something. Mm. Now, that is the level of dialogue that we had gone for at the time. Indeed. Uh, for, 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 for dialoguing as to change of leadership, mm. we do think, like I stated earlier, mm, yes, yes, go ahead. that if the situations are in favor of doing that, then definitely we shall come up and say, please, can we have a dialogue? But that does not stop us from continuing All right. <coughs> to extend a voice that dialogue is the way to go. Great insight. To get back to your yeah. question, of before maybe you, you, you get there, you asked me. Yeah, David Musiri has been silent for, for a while now. We okay, need to okay. engage him. It's mm. fine. It's okay. All right, Devin Musiri would uh, have two questions for you, but one pertains to police arguing that uh, Noob are a bunch of troublemakers who shun negotiation, who shun court, pro uh, court processes to only wreak havoc. What do you have to say about that? Uh, actually, actually, from the start, mm. from Genesis, I told you from inception, mm. from when we were still as a movement, people power movement, police and all other agents, security, sister agents, Indeed. always wanted us to be portrayed as violent people, very disobedient people. And that's why they have called us all sorts of names, hooligans, whatever they have at their own exposure. So you think it was a smear campaign to justify their actions on your supporters? No. It's just because this, this ceases to be police. Mm. The police that you also witnessed, I, I know you, 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 you see when they, yes. uh, they are anchoring the mm. news. But a police you see whose boss, the IGP, comes out and says, we shall keep on beating the journalists to protect them. To protect them. Mm. And that we saw it in Kololo. There was no protection there. Uh, yes. Uh, in mm. Kololo, were they uh, no, protecting them the from doing what? Mm. Now, this, this police works for the one I, I put in quotes as the dictator. Because the dictator took over all institutions. They do not work and serve this country and Ugandans. Again, you they said dictator David Musiri, putting into account that um, if President Museveni was a <coughs> dictator, Robert Chagulani wouldn't be alive. FDC's uh, Kiza Besija wouldn't be alive. All these other generals that have decided to run against him wouldn't be alive just like the behavior of Amin and Obote. Don't you think it's a callous um, kind of title, dictated, being put on President Museveni, who has agreed to free some of your supporters who were arrested? Of course, very many dictators in various countries, mm. they have run, run, running men and those of opposition. But and no opposition politician has been killed by bullet or anything like that. 
But of course, we are, they have survived several times. Some of them, I they see. are not dead, but mm. of course, they are living dead. Mm. Because Why? what for what they go through, the trauma, they are so much traumatized. Mm. Living on that, mm. we cannot say that we have failed to... Maybe police is only blaming us for not submitting to their, to their commands. Because there is nothing like a negotiation between police mm. and NUP. Mm. Because... W what is their sole? Uh, what is their sole role as police? It would be keeping people and their property. But then we've been these, seeing these are the, the these are the very people that are actually killing citizens mm -hmm. of Uganda. We have a lot of examples we can give you. Please do. It's a, a callous list. allegation. Go ahead. Give us examples. Rita Nabu Kenya mm. was killed by Uganda Near police. the market, yes. Near the market. Camera was there. We have never seen the footage till now. Go ahead. And which footage you are talking about and the cameras that were so much expensive mm. and took mm. the taxpayers' money. Mm. And that is the police we are talking about now. Would you say since the November 18th We have Ayas Ayasin Kauma. Yes. Uh, we have Yasin Kauma who was shot by the security agents. Mm. I have a friend called uh, Akim Sekama from... From Ruel. Another one was killed from Rita Nabu Kenya's barrio. Yes. Yes. As we <laughs> as we're returning from the barrio, mm. Dan Chene was shot Dan by a police. Indeed. And that is the police that we are talking about that mm. we have to, to go and negotiate. Negotiate on what? Actually, police would negotiate with Ugandanis because as I said, we are not only NUP, but mm. we are people power. Indeed. And we believe that we believe in the power that are in invested in the people of the Republic of Uganda. Why don't the you agree with uh, the Democratic Party when they talk about issues to do with dialogue, having discussions with this government? Yes, we, we do agree. We, we do agree on certain principles and also disagree on mm. certain principles. Just like we are in the studio here, mm. we may not at, at a certain given time X mm. all believe in the same thing. Multi-party politics for you. Yes, mm. but we... We came up with the, what we call United Forces of Change. Yes. And unfortunately, DP has not always responded. Maybe they want us to, to, to have that kind of intimacy together when we are going for iPod. But we have had, like even you saw mm. on, the last, on, the, on, the, on the eve of the last campaigns where we got uh, candidates of of the United Forces of Change, a candidate, power candidate, um, Grisha Monto, mm. candidate, Robert Sentamuchagulani. Mm. I cannot explain for DP why, but it's not true that we don't want to work uh, with uh, Opio Kola is here. Uh, he's the Democratic Party spokesperson. Asman Basali was actually throwing fire and spitting fire at the same time. He was saying, you know what? UPC, Uganda People's Congress, and uh, the Democratic Party are not opposition. Simply, they are in bed with the NRM party. Because you're the only two parties that showed up, plus the NRM. And he said, it's because you're in bed with the NRM party. And you're looking at the allowances that come with, you know, engaging in the summit and so forth. And that's why you went for the dialogue. I, I, I do not. Uh, I, I, I because he was wondering why you didn't uh, join United uh, Forces for Change. Well... I am wondering which one I should begin with because you've raised the two issues. The first one, you talked about uh, Honorable Basar were making such statements. You're in bed with the NRM, which, yes. Mm. Which I have not uh, personally heard, but... It was if reactions if to if the I if iPod if summit. If mm. indeed he did so, mm. then he should remember that a summit before that one, he was actually a participant does, mm. does that mean that he is also, or he was also in bed with the NRM? Mm. No, let's not trivialize this issue of uh, the dialogue. Mm. The people who are saying that DP's attempt to go and dialogue on the status mm. quo, on the matters that were happening, the abductions, uh, torture, killings, that it, it, it was not proper, what have they done that has yielded results other than vituperations on media? 
I want to tell you mm. that this summit was basically about the situation that Ugandans were going through. As DP, we, 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 don't, we don't relish engaging in activities that waste time. Mm. Now, when the President General came from a sabbatical, you see after the elections, he Indeed. gave himself a sabbatical mm. of the media. All right. When he came back on his maiden address after the elections, because he was fearing one question, he, he, that, he, that's why he stayed away from the media, P.O. Caller. He, he, he had told us that if he loses more seats in Parliament, he wouldn't be showing up, he would be resigning. But then he flipped. That's why he was staying away from the media. Well, but, but go ahead. If, if I engage in that, that one will adulterate <laughs> my point. But what I'm saying go is, ahead. Mm. when he came, mm. he said, instead, actually we agreed as a party, mm. that instead of using informal means yeah. to send our message, mm. Why don't we use the formerly established structures, iPod. namely mm. iPod? Because iPod, it, it actually involves political parties that have got representations in parliament, of which uh, uh, NRM mm. is part. Indeed. And at the time, the person who was chairing the, 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 the summit, who was to chair the summit, was the NRM chairman, who is also the president. So we're like, no, let's go and do this for the good of Ugandans. And indeed, Ugandans got the joy. Now people who are blaming DP for doing that, what have they done that has given Ugandans joy other than This is what they are blaming the DP for, or mm. pure cola. You go to a farm, you go to your cow to get some milk at 8 a.m. There is no milk. You go back at 2 p.m. There is no milk. What makes you think if you go back at 6 p.m. there will be milk? The first summit in 2018, the second one in 2019, resolutions were never implemented. Mm. So what were the reasons to be given that and assure us that the resolutions this time reached at the summit would be implemented? You see, I, I come from Teso mm. and uh, our forefathers were hunters. All right. But I want to tell you that if a hunter went hunting mm. and got nothing, that did not stop him from going there the following day. The following day. Mm. I can give you an example. But Parliament. Not on the same Parliament. Day and Parliament. not in the same spot. Parliament. That's what we are doing. Some of those people who are making a lot of uh, you know, utterances, mm. I want to tell you that they are part of this parliament. But you and I know that there is not a single resolution that can be passed by parliament that can be made law unless the NRM has interest in it, unless the NRM accepts it, allows it. Don't you? But we have people mm. who continue to contest to go to parliament. Don't you think what is the rationale? Don't you think you're hunting in the same position? I understand the rationale of going back the next day and you have a catch, but you're going into the same position. The same position. That's where you're hunting from. And yes. that is iPod. I, yes, it is not uh, upon the hunter to determine the movements of the animals. You never know. Maybe the following day the animal will be there, <laughs> and yet today it was not there. Now, to get to right. to mm. the other point mm. of whether we do believe in unity or not, of course, mm. this is it. This is a, it's it. This is a, a public secret. Yes, there is nobody that can fault the Democratic Party on being proponents of unity. We did. And uh, we did establish uh, what we call uh, mm. uh, uh, the Grand People's Coalition, mm. which was intended to coalesce all the political players into a bolus mm. that would actually exclusively discuss mm. the plans that we are to go with pre, during, and post elections. Mm. When we called it a meeting, it is only, I think, uh, it was only aunt mm. that was represented and Gemma, but other colleagues did not come. Mm. We said, okay, fine. If that is the case, maybe we shall find another time to converge before going into elections. Mm. We even went to a level of nominating our presidential candidate on the last minute. Why? Because we still had the hope that perhaps we would do have a, a mm. single presidential candidate. All right. But our colleagues said, no. Uh, I, I, I want to be specific. Y y you've had, a, you had a, uh, Honorable Chagulani making statements that the people down there have united. 
the people down there have united for us. We are moving. You will find us there. But I want to tell you that the people who united, who were united down there during and uh, before elections, they are the same people who are asking the leaders, what next? David Musiri, what do we let's do next? talk about what next. Yes, Opio, on that, on that point. What next, David Musiri? What will the end game be? Now, you, you're cognizant of the fact that in this election, over 9 to 10 million people did not vote. These are individuals who say, I don't want anything to do with the uh, violence in this country. Me, I want peace that President Museveni brought in this country from 1986, so I'm not going to vote. You get the point. Now you're calling for peaceful protests. Aren't you afraid that you, Ugandans might be adamant to join, given some facts, some history? November 18th and 19th, people died. Don't you think people might be afraid to join these peaceful protests? What is the plan B in case that happens? I think it is not right to say that uh, people, were, the population was contented for not going to vote that because of the peace that and, and the sleep. Actually, that is an analogy that is uh, around members of the public that, the, that the, they believe, some people believe if President Museveni is away from office, there will actually be instability in this country. Those are the people who stay away from the polls because we did conduct surveys. We talked to people and they're like, why aren't you going to vote? And they're like, me, I want President Seven. Why don't you go and vote for him? <laughs> so those are the issues we are dealing with. Aren't you afraid that now with the protests and given the bloody history that we've been seeing, that people might be adamant to join? Actually, I would, I would want to, to affirm it to you, dear viewers that are watching us. Uh, this is not the first country that has had such incidences. Uh, I think we can remember even such dictators at the end of the polls, they can, ma they can emerge as winners and with high percentages. I remember Saddam Hussein had over 99% 90, of the vote in that country. Then Muammar Gaddafi right here in Africa he had over 80, 89%. But today, they are in the history. All of them were overthrown. We can, to, we can look at our neighbor here. But there were never peaceful protests in these countries. Yes. And that is the point we are trying to drive. That on. is the question we have to answer as yeah. NUP. Which kind, of, which kind of country do we want? Do we want to to liberate a country like Libya with a civil war, or we would want to have a country that is liberated but by a peaceful protests, David just Mosiri, like Sudan. What can be achieved through peaceful protests that can be achieved through dialogue? You're talking about South Sudan, but we saw the number of people who died. There were so many deaths in that country during those protests. We are talking about military junta's and the way they react when they are threatened. In Sudan, it happened. They were peaceful, but they started shooting and people died. Myanmar, there have been peaceful protests. People are being shot. Journalists are being arrested. Politicians rounded off. We are talking about the reaction of the regimes when they feel threatened. One thing I know that mm. when the, the right time comes, just like our sole purpose mm. as NUP with our president, His Excellency Robert Sintamu mm. Chagulan, was just one, the mission to remove the dictator. Because what do we say? And what sh shall we tell our, our, our children? I am telling you, my brother, all of us, yes. we are concerned mm -hmm. about this. Mm -hmm. History is going to judge us. As much as we know, President Museveni is ready to quash everyone that rises. But I know he cannot quash all Ugandans if they decide at one time to rise. Musiri, Bec is this the only way? Is there no chance to dialogue, to talk about this, before we go? Because, because the term dialogue ceases meaning with President Museven. Mr. Museven calls you for dialogue when he just wants you to submit. David Musiri, submit thank you very submissive. much on that note. We've come to the end of morning at NTV. It's 8.45 and we've run out of time, but uh, you've sent the message home. Right. Opio Kola, many thanks for having made the time to speak to us right here on Morning at NTV. The issue of security, gentlemen, is really paramount. Romeo Busiku, I can fight back. But what about my sisters? Can they run?
when there is instability in this country, dialogue should be the issue and the way to go to develop this country. Gentlemen, thank you very much. And uh, for you who has been watching Morning at NTV from 6.30 a.m., we do thank you for your love and support. Do join us tomorrow same time for the kings, kings, queens, boys and girls who are celebrating their birthdays on this particular day. Please be cognizant of the fact that the coronavirus pandemic is still wearing its very uh, ugly head with uh, 40,000.